We are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Welcome to today's webinar hosted by Travify Academy with three amazing panelists who I will introduce in just a couple minutes. Um, but I just want to say once again, we're really excited for everyone to be here. And what we wanted to do with this webinar is we wanted to gather top cruise industry experts and have a conversation about the future of cruising, because it's very safe to say everyone is looking forward to cruising's great return. And there is a very, very big pent up demand. Um, so we want to take this opportunity to ask um, these experts questions and just get ready to set sail again. And we're going to cover um, everything from marketing cruises right now to safety protocols, test cruising, so many things. And we'll have time for a Q&A too, which is going to be really great. Um, but to, before I introduce um, our panelists, I just want to quickly introduce myself for anyone new to Travify Academy. I'm Stephanie Grice and the Senior Client Champion and Education Coordinator here at Travify. And if this is your first time joining us for Travify Academy webinar, welcome, and we're so excited to have you. Um, but really, I just want to quickly share what Travify Academy is and what we have designed Travify Academy for is to be a free educational resource just to further Travify's mission to power the success of travel professionals. So you can find um, free webinar replays, articles, all kinds of helpful content at academy.travify.com. And also be sure to like us on our Facebook page. Uh, and you can stay up to date on all of the information of coming webinars. Um, but a couple things that I want to mention here too is that this webinar is being recorded. So if you have to hop off client calls to book a cruise, that's okay. We get it. It's it's okay. You can hop off and um, we'll be sending a recording after this um, as well. So everybody will receive that. And then we'll also put it up on our YouTube channel so you can catch it later too. Um, and then the other thing to mention is we will have time at the end for Q&A. So if you use that Q&A, um, that question box in your GoToWebinar control panel, you can use that uh, to ask those questions. And then at the end, hopefully we can get to those. But now, the moment we have all been waiting for. I'm going to introduce our speakers. So first up, we have Lori Bone, Director of National Accounts, Training and Trade Association, Sales for Royal Caribbean International. So thank you so much for being here today. And then we have Christine Karst, Executive Vice President and Co-Owner of AMA Waterways. And then we also have Charles Sylvia, who's Vice President of Industry and Trade Relations with Cruise Lines International Association, also known as Clea. So welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. We're really excited to have you. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, Thank that's good. We have a lot of great questions lined up for um, our panelists here today. So I'm going to jump right in so that we make sure we have plenty of time to get to those Q&As at the end, because I know there will be a lot of them there. So. The first thing that I want to talk about, and, and also to our panelists too, feel free to chime in at any point as well too. Um, but the first thing that I wanted to talk about here, and let me just change my slide here. So I want to talk about um, one of the biggest questions that agents have. So it's going to be a big one here. Is uh, And Christine, I'm going to start with you here. So what are the biggest changes in river cruising that travel advisors can expect just as cruising picks back up into 2021 and into 2022? <laughs> Thank you so much and hello to all of you. Um, this is great time that you invest in this hour here. So first of all, let me say you are all needed. Your expertise perspective and your optimism are so, so important to really restart together with us again. And um, there are so many questions out there. There are so many leads for cruising that are out there that it's actually really you. You can be the expert because you know travel will come back stronger in every way than before. However, you're lending your own hand to your clients. So make yourself always accessible and available and um, knowing that you're not alone, we are in this together and we want to provide you all the tools that you need in order to make it happen. So um, we are absolutely ready to cruise whenever travel restrictions are lifted. Um, we were the only US-based river cruise line to operate in Europe during summer 2020 with protocols, health and safety in place. And we have the experience in delivering safe and wonderful river cruise experiences for our guests again when we get started. So of course we made adjustments on board our ships um, we had plexiglass dividers, 
everyone had a face covering. Um, we do so much more outdoor now. And I think that is one of the biggest trends that shows when it comes to the future, small groups, which we always had lots of included show excursions, but it's up to you to choose the tour that really captures your interest. So we offer hiking tours, biking tours. We also see a little bit a trend um, that the big cities, which used to be big magnets, are maybe not as important anymore as those scenic, beautiful vine areas. Again, lots of nature that is coming. And with this outdoor experience also comes up some adjustments on board our ships when it comes to the whole dining experience. So um, we will go away, of course, from our buffets that we always had for breakfast and partially for lunch. Um, we will replace this with action stations, really um, wonderful um, chefs culinary stations, I can say so, extensive menu choices, but it will be always delivered to the table. Um, on top of it, we will use the sun deck even more. We have done it with ice cream parties, apple strudel demonstrations, many fun things, cocktail parties outside. But now we will do more like barbecue when it comes to this. Of course, it's all weather permitting, right? And we have also introduced um, now a river view room service menu. Um, for all the meals, if you would like to dine in the privacy of your stateroom, utilize your balcony, which all our ships, most of the staterooms have a balcony, then of course it can also be delivered to your stateroom. Altogether, I can say with our Ama Magna, our double white ship, when Rudy designed this ship more than five years ago, you know, he had the luxury of space in mind. We didn't know that a pandemic would be coming um, like what we have now here. But of course, we can keep the social distance all over, you know, going into all these different restaurants, having oversized state rooms, libraries, um, movie theaters. But again, you know, and where you can open uh, actually the door, we never circulate um, air inside. Everything comes from the outside, so every state room, has its own individual air conditioning system, so has ha, have the dining rooms, the lounges, so it's our rainfall system that comes in. So we always really invested in state of the art, never shied away from these costs um, because the ships are new, um, really luxurious, absolutely wonderful. So um, I can tell you that we look very much into the future together with you. We are ready to welcome you and your guests on board. Pretty much when you are ready, and as I said, when the travel ban is lifted, most of our crew members are from the local areas where we are cruising through, so we don't have to fly them in. And um, so could be really ready within three weeks of the announcement, we all can fly to Europe again. Yay. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is everything's just going to happen, you know, so fast and just being um, ready for it. And yeah, that's awesome. And uh, Lori, I actually recently read that Royal Caribbean reported a 30% jump in new bookings just compared to the end of 2020. So yes, everyone's getting super excited, big pent up demand. So what are some of the challenges agents should be prepared for as sailing resumes for Royal Caribbean or not necessarily challenges, but also just things to be aware of to talk to their clients about? and have them ready for. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Stephanie. And it, it's so exciting to be here because that pent up demand that you just mentioned, it's real. And people, there's a lot of talk about revenge travel and that people are tired of being locked down and they're tired of not taking a vacation. And I will tell you for the travel advisor, you all need, my, my concern is you need to be ready. And I know you are ready, but we've all been on pause now, actually almost a year. It, this week is a year where it marks that. And I cannot believe that. But it's about being ready and being ready as far as thinking about the cruises. You know, we've just opened up our deployment well into 2023. It's about understanding our healthy return to service protocols. We're, we haven't announced them fully yet, 
but they will be coming soon. And when they come, we're gonna challenge you and we're also gonna count on you to deliver that message to your clients, our guests, because we know there's nobody that can deliver the message and tell the story of how a healthy return to cruising will be than you, that, that travel advisor. So we're gonna count on you for that. And you're gonna need to take that time to educate so that you can be confident in that messaging. But the pent up demand is real. And I'm also thinking and, and know that you all will need to be really, really ready for the supply and demand challenges. I think that it's gonna be a real race, a real race, I should say, um, to that finish line of getting your clients booked. Once that light turns green, we, the dimmer switch has been off, but I'll tell you, as we come back and as that, that uh, light turns green, as Vicki often says, I will tell you, I think that really just making sure your clients are booked. I know a lot of clients today talk about waiting. And while I understand 2021 is a little bit less certain for many people, as you look at 2023 and 2022, I will tell you, this is the time right now to be thinking and helping your clients make those decisions. Families that haven't seen each other, this is the perfect time to be talking to them about coming together for family travel. And the other thing that I think you should be thinking about is really leveraging automation. I know that sounds kind of out of left field, but you want to make sure you're using your time wisely. And to leverage the automation, you know, this last year, we may not have been sailing and cruising, but I will tell you, inside the company, we have been working tirelessly to make your lives better, easier, and simplified. And we have created many, many automation tools, all those FCCs that are out there. I know, um, Christine, she talked about them. Those are out there, but boy, you can actually use an FCC from a client and, and rebook them through automation and never have to pick up the phone and it's about five clicks. So things like leveraging our automation, understanding our deployment that has now opened and really just being ready. After all this time being on pause, being ready is key. Yeah, absolutely. That's really, really important. Just Because again, going back to what we just said is it could be in a week or everything could just change in a couple of weeks. So yes, absolutely. And um, Charles, what types of challenges do you expect travel advisors uh, to face in the upcoming year um, or into 2022? Well, thank you very much, Stephanie. And I'd like to thank you and David for this wonderful opportunity. And of course, oh, everyone absolutely. who's on this call, um, you know, and, it, and it's just wonderful to be here with, um, with these two brands, with Royal Caribbean International and with AMA Waterways, both of whom I consider the, the leading innovators in their categories. And ladies and gentlemen, I think the, the greatest challenges before you are who to get back to first. You're, you're going to really be in a situation where you need to focus on your qualifying skills and make certain that you understand what business is going to pay you the most. And you know, I've, I've said it a couple of times this past week, is that the, the the biggest problem that a travel advisor is going to have uh, moving forward as we resume operations worldwide is just that is prioritizing uh, who to get back to first because the the data shows us the most recent CLIA data indicates that seventy four percent seventy four percent of all past cruise guests who are able to cruise moving into the future will be booking within the next 18 to 24 months, 74%. So this, this inundation of pent up demand is going to be as unprecedented as the crisis that created it. Um, and right now, if I was um, still selling, you know, I started out in this business as a travel advisor back in 1994. And if I was still on the front line, I would really be focusing on boning up on time management. I love what Lori said about automation, leaning on any tools and resources that you can use and, and put to use to, uh, to make yourself more effective and more productive. And really focusing on qualifying, qualifying that client, making sure that the client understands your value and that they're loyal to you and that they will end up booking with you and that you're focusing on those clients first and not necessarily on the price-driven clients. You want a value-driven client uh, to focus on and making certain that you are going after the best business to be had. I'm gonna call it right now, right here and right now, we are about to enter a period, a renaissance period for travel advisors. Never before have consumers needed you more and so um, a big part of it is going to be making sure that you focus where you're most valued. Yes, that is so awesome. And it's, 
yeah, it, it, it is the, the cra going through all the craziness, there is going to be a gift at the end of just insane amount of travelers wanting to travel, seeing the value in travel agents. So that is all so important and so true. And going off of that, so this kind of goes into our next topic pretty well, is marketing. So we talked about, you know, um, there's a pent up demand, people wanna go. Um, in one way, almost marketing might be really easy right now, but you also wanna make sure like you, like you all said, is that you wanna know who you're targeting in that. So I just wanna discuss that really quick. So Lori, I'll start off with you on this, is um, how is Royal Caribbean helping agents market easily to their clients right now? Absolutely. Well, we have a, a myriad of things. We have a huge sales force, the largest in the industry, and those strategic account managers are out there ready to help uh, your tra the travel advisor, you, to really make sure that you understand all the programs that we have. We're doing marketing. We as a company are marketing. We have many, many tools through our loyaltoyouallways.com website. And anybody out there, you know, loyal to you always is the key for us. And uh, we have many, many resources, lots of emails, banners, things that you can customize for your agency. But one of my favorite tools that I think is really important, and the price is right, because there is no cost. That's right, no cost, and it's called Branch Up. And Branch Up is a wonderful program where all you need is your business Facebook page and to go and enroll. That is it. Once you've enrolled in Branch Up, we produce great information, we create content, and we post it for you in your Facebook page about Royal Caribbean, about our promotions, about things that are happening. So Branch Up is one of the many, many tools that we offer you all to really make you look professional, make it very easy for you, and very turnkey. And that's critical because staying connected right now, I keep going back to the fact that we've been on pause, but Sometimes I think people think, wow, my clients aren't really ready to hear from me yet. But y'all, I will tell you, while there are some clients that haven't been ready to travel yet, and if you're staying connected and making it personal, you're going to know those clients that have told you when they're going to be ready to travel. But many of the clients you may think aren't ready quite possibly could be. And if you're not reaching out and you're not staying connected, I have to tell you, I am sure there is a travel advisor that is. So please, this is such an important time to really stay connected. I say make it personal, pick up the phone, make that call, but really leverage branch up is, is simple and, and straightforward. It's available through loyalty you always, and it makes your Facebook, your business Facebook account or page come to life with beautiful imagery and stories about Royal Caribbean and our return to service. And you will be the star of all those posts. So that would be my recommendation. That's awesome. And that's the automation you were saying too, is it's it's just automating all of that. So you're constantly pushing things out, staying top of mind. I like that. Yep. Very it's perfect. Good. Yeah. And Charles, I know that you have a lot of great resources over at Clio for advisors when it comes to marketing. So can you share that a little bit with everyone and how they can access that? Certainly. So first of all, uh, anyone who's on this call who is a travel advisor and who sells cruise needs to be, needs to be part of Clio. CLIA is the Worldwide Cruise Industry Trade Association, and it is our job to help you differentiate yourself and create a competitive advantage in which you lay claim to your expertise as a cruise, uh, a, a seller of cruise travel. Um, we are the certifying and credentialing authority who will certify you officially with the industry as a certified cruise counselor. Um, that being said, uh, for any of you who are members of CLIA, we've got some tremendous resources. And unlike uh, my dear friends, um, uh, you know, who represent cruise lines and river cruise operators, uh, we focus primarily on dispelling myths and misconceptions and really helping you with the reality of cruising, that it is the safest, most secure, healthiest, and sustainable option to, and I think the best option to experience the world. So that's really what it's all about. That's the focus of CLIA materials. Our, our um, marketing is really more public affairs and public relations type marketing on behalf of the entire industry, where we tell the wonderful story of cruise and we also help lend credibility. So CLIA is approximately, here in the United States and Canada, uh, we have approximately 45,000 members, both travel agencies and agents. And the number one reason why people are part of CLIA is to uh, gain credibility and to use CLIA as that third party credible um, uh, 
association uh, to point to and say, hey, look, this information came from CLIA. Didn't come from me. It didn't come from the cruise line. It comes from the Worldwide Cruise Industry Trade Association. So it helps elevate the credibility and profile of the cruise seller. And I'm proud to say that uh, going back uh, 27 years, 1994, I got my first CLIA certification when I was still wet behind the ears as a rookie travel advisor and i used it you know i i had it on every business card i had it on uh well nowadays we have email so you can put it on email signatures i i plastered it everywhere and i got a lot of free publicity uh spoke with radio stations and on television and wrote articles for the newspaper all free of charge because of the fact that i leveraged my credentials and that's really going to be what it's all about we, um, as we resume cruising operations worldwide, folks, we're not looking to turn you into medical experts or public health experts. But what CLIA does do is we're offering you all the resources that you need to have at, at arm's reach so that when your clients do ask you about uh, the protocols moving forward, that you're able to access that information, access the resources that you need to provide them with an informed, educated, expert answer. Yeah, that's amazing. It's so great how much marketing is out there and things like ever. The suppliers just want to give you information, so take that and use that. And so that's that's really incredible and cool. Um, so another thing, so Christine, I wanted to go to you next because when we were chatting last week, you had mentioned about particular river cruises that might be the most popular in the river cruising market right now, which is also another thing of marketing is what are those the the great things to start marketing now? And um, can you share that more with us on uh, just kind of the most popular ones that you're seeing right now or ready to launch with? Um, soon absolutely i will be happy to do so but first let me say uh my waterways is also a very proud member of clear and i agree with everything what mm -hmm. charlie had to say and um and the same um with the pent-up demand as a travel advisor keep in mind that your clients want to travel again in the best possible category that price is not as important anymore as it used to be because after a lost year for so many, everyone just wants to get out. And that's why it's so important to, to really listen to everyone, to every client, where do they like to go? What are their dreams? Do they have family maybe somewhere over there in a certain part of the world or so? So definitely um, listen to your clients' um, concerns and, and address them accordingly because everyone is a different level of readiness to travel and may have very different questions that need answering in order to have that peace of mind to make the reservation. So as I mentioned, um, nature is becoming more and more important. Um, so we, we see that, of course, um, the Danube and the Rhine, which is a combination between those big capitals and the nature, they are really trending ahead again, but because also maybe they are in, a, in an area of Europe that is um, considered a little bit more progressive, um, than some of the other areas. Um, I wish I could say that France is ahead of the curve right now because I personally love France. And we moved our ship, the Amma Christina, to France last year to the Rhone River because of such a strong demand that we had seen there. Um, but, you know, when I, I see many, many clients looking at how are the countries trending? when it comes to COVID cases and so on. And definitely Germany is ahead of the curve. I'm very proud of this. I was born in this country, um, but we see a lot of bookings coming for the heart of Europe. But we also see trends to longer cruises. We see trends to family celebrations, you know, celebrating um, the 80th birthday where the granddad is inviting the entire family to come on board together. This 50th wedding anniversary that was postponed, maybe the high school graduation that was postponed. All of these uh, celebration travels will happen again, no matter in which area it is, if it's in Europe, if it's in Asia, which maybe will open up a little bit later than Europe, that is our gut feeling, or also in Africa, where we have a ship on the Choba River, aside um, of the Sambesi Queen. Um, but I would say um, 
Longer cruising is definitely ahead of the curve now. And I'm very proud that at Ama Waterways, we just announced the longest river cruise in the world. Seven rivers, 14 countries in 46 days. Um, this cruise will happen on June 1st, 2023. And we have a wait list already. It wasn't even officially announced. And the wait list, again, it starts with the Swedes. We have so many more guests, travel agents competing for the Swedes that now we are actually looking into a second and a third date just to be able to accommodate all this demand because you never want to turn the booking away, right? You always need to see how can you best um, accommodate this? And then of course, out of challenges come again, great opportunities to make things happen. And that's what we see in general with this pandemic. Before, we were all very, very busy just working our way. With the pandemic, a lot is thinking now outside of the box, becoming creative, seeing what the tomorrow brings and adapt to this. And I so agree with Laurie when she talks about technology. You know, we are developing apps, you know, everything is there, contact list at your fingertips, right? And of course, with Summer Waterways, you have your co-branded websites again. There is uh, our Travel Advisor Academy. There's the Marketing Suitcase where we talk about tools, you know, to make reservations, groups, how to get this all together. And again, as all of you said, this is the time now because so many of us work from home. I think we all right now work from our home, right? <laughs> we are not in the office. Even so I go to the office from time to time. Um, but it is, we save the driving time. We can start early in the morning till in the evening. This virtual environment gives us so many opportunities. And that's the same for you, our travel advisor partners and us, the cruise lines. And we always try to listen to you where you and your clients want to go next. You drive us forward. So there are more rivers in the world, which I cannot announce right now we are looking for, but we have the time right now to really create new products as well. And you will hear about this in a couple of weeks or months from now. Oh, you left us on a cliffhanger now. Now we're going to be watching. <laughs> I'll keep watching the news now, see what's coming. No, it's it's so cool. And it is really interesting too. Yeah, those longer cruises and, you know, the um, that where everybody, they couldn't travel for a year. So they're like, I'm going to do a bigger, I have a bigger budget now because I didn't travel last year. So just so true. So yeah, no, that's that's all awesome. Thank you all for sharing this, uh, the marketing. But next topic that I wanted to talk about here is kind of goes in with marketing because um, like you were saying, Charles, about how we're just trying to inform travelers about cruising and keep those facts out there. So safety protocols is a big one of those because it's so important, you know, stay up to date ever-changing protocols as well. Um, so Christine, I'm actually going to go back to you on this because um, I know that Alma Waterways started sailing last summer, which is so incredible. Um, so how do you explain any safety protocols to concerned travelers right now? Oh, really quick, uh, Christine, can you hear me? So it looks like we lost audio on you, but can people hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I'll, I'll oh okay. wait, there we go. I'm so sorry. I thought I thought it was me, and then yeah, and Scott from our team just said, "I I really hate to have you start, but can can you say oh. what you said before? Because everything's oh, back sorry. now." I'm so so sorry. <laughs> no, I don't know what was happening. I thought it was me. <laughs> uh, so technology. <laughs> so, so I, <laughs> now I mentioned that there are um, a few multi-layered um, protocols, of course, starting with the pre-cruise health questions private airport transfers, 
luggage sanitation, daily temperature checks of guests and crew, increased frequency of cleaning of public areas, the plexiglass dividers between the seating areas and the lounge, and the physical distancing in the dining rooms, just to name a view. But also the excursions, they are always operated in small groups of 10 to 15 people, now even more. And we have examined all of our included excursions with our suppliers to plan how we will adapt should physical distancing even be required in the towns that we visit. Now the vaccination progress that is going on, especially I see in the US moving forward quite quickly, will of course help people when they are vaccinated um, that um, you know, they, they might feel a little bit uh, more comfortable. Even so, I can see that we want to keep the face coverings, at least in the public areas. Um, we, when I look back what we have done last year with the German speaking market, uh, it all was so successful. We had no COVID case on board, but it also goes back to our crew, I have to say, our crew, our hotel manager, being absolutely wonderful and nice, but also a little bit strict because normally crew in their downtime is able to go out in the ports, in the cities. But you know, our crew members, we are so proud and honored to be the first ones to be on board our ships again, that they would not jeopardize anything, would just stay on board, do the things that they need to do. And I also know that um, for instance, in Romania and Bulgaria, there are lots of our crew is coming from. Um, vaccination process is on top there. Uh, a lot of our crew members currently do get vaccinated so that again, once it comes to the green light, as Laurie mentioned so well, we know we have the crew that is vaccinated. We have our guests, many of our guests. Um, even so at this point, we do not require to get vaccinated because there might be so many younger people or people from different countries that just don't have the, ch the chance to get vaccinated at this point. Um, and you also know we work with Adventures by Disney. So with this, they have charters with us. When we open up the season again, we cannot penalize families um, that their children didn't have a chance to get vaccinated yet. So that's why, you know, we monitor everything. We see how it all plays. But one thing you can be sure, and that's what our promise is when, it, when we start cruising again in May for the German speaking market, we will do everything to have the safest rubber cruise option available for you. And we have done it and we will do it again. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool that you've already proved it, which is just so amazing. So that's that's really cool. And uh, Lori, I know that Royal Caribbean is doing a lot right now. It's in just so much going on. And so can you tell us um, all the new enhancements or all the news uh, so far on safety protocols? Absolutely, Stephanie. And, you know, actually, uh, Christine, she, she said it beautifully. And so many of the things that she mentioned are things that you'll likely be seeing on a Royal Caribbean ship. That said, we have not officially announced publicly all of the protocols that will actually be uh, practiced on board our ships. We've been working closely with our Blue Ribbon panel of experts that's been led by Dr. Scott Gottlieb and Governor Mike Levitt. And we have been working Royal Caribbean Group along with Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings in partnership because early on we said how we know the industry has to really win together. And so we came together with the other very large cruise brand and have been working with this Blue Ribbon panel of experts that are, you know, uh, biotechnology experts, uh, scientists, epidemiologists, uh, maritime safety experts, and all of them top in their class in the industry. And they've been working together, gosh, back last fall, Charlie, keep me real here, last fall we, we worked with, uh, with, of course, CLIA and the CDC, and we turned in 74 protocols that we proposed. Even since then, what's been fascinating is 
technology is changing, understanding of the virus is changing, and so it's all very fluid. So that's exactly why we haven't told you all the things in detail quite yet, because we're not sure what will be required by the time we actually return to service. That said, I can tell you a couple of things that are really, really exciting. So we announced, gosh, last fall, our Muster 2.0. And Muster 2.0 is our new safety drill or safety demonstration practice. Now, anybody out there that's cruised, you all know that the first day of embarkation, everything has always traditionally stopped. You had to report to a safety demonstration or a safety drill. It required the entire ship to all basically come together in a similar area all at the same time, creating lots of crowds, lots of lines, and of course, an interruption to that first day on board the ship, which is such an important day. Today, with Muster 2.0, I love where we've landed. You use your smartphone or your interactive stateroom television, and you view a handful of quick, brief safety demonstrations or safety videos. Then, after you view those, you are required to go to the muster station you've been assigned. You go and there's a crew member there that will answer any questions you may have. You then, of course, have a quick conversation with them. They'll scan your room card and you are free to go. And you have a four hour window in which you can complete this safety drill. And what I love about this is no more disruption to your day of embarkation, no more large crowds. You do it when it's convenient for you. By the way, the ship doesn't shut down because in, in the past, the ship would completely shut down because all the crew members were doing the safety drill with all of the guests. So it's a really, really huge improvement. And what I love about it is this was started long before COVID even hit. In fact, we were doing, uh, we were doing testing on board the Symphony of the Seas a year ago in January. And the guests that experienced this absolutely loved it. They actually shared with us, they learned more and retained more information about what to do in case of an emergency, which is the whole point of the mustard drill anyway. So that is coming and that is patented technology that not only Royal Caribbean Group, all of the brands in Royal Caribbean, of course, including Royal Caribbean International, but even um, some of the other cruise brands and anybody uh, that wants to use this technology, we will gladly share it because we know we have to win together. So that's a huge, huge enhancement. And there's something else we just announced last week about our filtration. And we had done some research and we found that the filtration systems that we had existing on the ships were very efficient and did an excellent job of bringing fresh air into the ships. But we also, through the studies, got extra conservative and decided to add extra layers of protection. And so we're actually using MERV grade 13 filters in the ships. And to give you an idea of what that means, because I didn't really know what that meant, is when you think about your filters you use at home, they are MERV rated one through eight on average. So this is nearly twice that. And so we're using these filtration filters throughout the ship. The air is filtered twice when it comes in and the air is brought in on the forward part on one side of the ship and it is expelled on the opposite side of the ship in the aft. Anyway, the air is filtered twice when it comes in, another time when it is going into different areas of the ship, like your stateroom or maybe the show lounge or an area on the ship. And then it's actually filtered again before it is expelled back out on the opposite side of the ship in the aft. And so really the filtration systems have been far enhanced. Our medical facilities, which have also been enhanced and um, expanded uh, due to all the COVID uh, challenges that uh, have been out there, we're so excited that the medical facilities have been expanded and we actually have HEPA filters we have put in there and they have a completely separate filtration system within those facilities anyway. So that's another change that we've had. And something else that we can share, while we don't know if we'll require our guests to have vaccines, which is a hot topic in question, we can confirm that we will have our crew members vaccinated. So that's something important to note. That does, I actually saw a question come in already about that, that one, <laughs> that's very, it, it is a hot one. Yeah, yep. it is, yeah. And see, there's so much, so much safety going on um, in here to make it safe, which is incredible. And, um, but Charles, I didn't wanna leave you out of this question, this conversation here. So is there, is there anything else that you've seen other cruise lines doing to ensure safety protocols? Well, I mean, across the board, there's so much innovation and so much adoption of new technologies and, and solutions. And, and I really think from a travel advisor standpoint, uh, the best way to get around, get your head around 
wrapped around all of the, the latest and greatest inf uh, information uh, is at cruising.org. We actually have a COVID-19 facts and resources page. And at the bottom of that page are the links to all of our cruise line members. So we have more than 50 uh, cruise line member members and river cruise operators. And they account, all, uh, I believe the number is 58 right now, and they account for 95% 95% of all cruise capacity worldwide. So it's vitally important for um, travel advisors to know where to get the latest information. So if you go to cruising.org and you go to our COVID-19 facts and resources page, at the very bottom, you'll see all the links for every single one of our cruise lines, most up-to-date um, information relating to all of this, all of the public uh, public health information that you need, all of the technology uh, information that you need, and I encourage, especially, you know, uh, I mentioned earlier about the uh, the fact that we're here with uh, innovation leaders uh, in river cruise and ocean cruise, and and as well as being uh, dear friends of mine both. Um, and I, I can tell you that the best way to get all the latest information is to follow. Uh, every trade facing um, platform that these brands have on social media, um, become certified with these brands, follow them on, on YouTube. All the videos I saw, Royal Caribbean International came out with a great um, uh, piece on their materials. It was an infographic, it was a video on that uh, air filtration system that you just heard Lori talk about. So there's a lot of information out there. Again, folks, the big pick, the big message is this. We're not looking to turn you into public health authorities. We want you to be travel advisors, successful ones. And the, but the best way to be most efficient is to be able to have all of these resources at, at an arm's length. Absolutely, yeah. And and those resources are there, which is so, so nice and, and at an arm's length, which is great. Um, but I have to say, every, there are so many questions that I'm actually going to cut off our uh, the, the other questions that I had. And I'm diving in because this is for the chance for the audience to ask these questions. So I'm going to start off asking these because lots, lots of participation. There's, there are always, I'm sure you're used to this by now, all of you on the panel, all these questions. Um, so with all of that that we've talked about, about the safety protocols and the marketing, that's where a lot of these questions kind of sit at. Um, so this first one that I want to ask is um, from Nick, and he said, do we expect a standard PCR test to be done on board a one to two days prior to embark or similar to what hotel partners are doing? Um, he said, despite vaccination efforts, we recognize that individual country regulations may continue to require this. Will this become a standard in the cruise industry? Um, this may also impact post-cruise extensions in um, countries as well. So kind of a, I know that's probably a very popular big question that a lot of you get, but I'll just let one of you take it away on there. <laughs> the big one. <laughs> well, I'm happy to jump in uh, just from an industry perspective. Uh, and, and the short answer, uh, I believe you said, Nick, the short answer to the question, Nick, is it's too soon to tell. Um, you know, CLIA has established the high level. And when I say CLIA, I'm talking about uh, the CEOs of every one of our our cruise line members and river cruise operators. So um, uh, we've established a very high level, um, people focused, um, science driven uh, level of protocols uh, for resumption of cruise operations. But it is, um, we've allowed the opportunity for each one of our members to manifest these public health standards. And again, Lori said it, fluid situation. So what, what is true today may not be true in a month. So um, they will manifest at each brand level. And, and that's really um, uh, what we know at the present time. And if I can just add to this, um, we are always monitoring the health regulations restrictions of all the local governments. You know, because with river cruising, um, let's, let's just talk about Europe, right? Because that's where most of the ships are. Um, you fly in, you fly a long way international uh, to Europe. And then of course you enter at a certain point, this could be Amsterdam in Holland, it could be Budapest in Hungary, it could be Munich in Germany, Vienna. So there might be all different regulations, restrictions, depending where you start. And we will completely conform with those local um, health authorities, whatever is needed. 
we will be doing. Now, at the same time, we are also very glad to say we are cruising in national waters. We are always like 10, 15 minutes away from the next medical facility. So, um, and that makes it also easier for river cruising because you're really just a stone's throw away from everything. And the governments uh, will always let you dock, yeah? Uh, so so there, is, there is no concern about anything. And we also know that from, from the medicine today, there is so much more knowledge about everything. Um, the treatment is much better. So I think we are in a, in a much better place today than we were yesterday. But I agree with Charlie. It's too early to really say it 100%. Yeah. 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 And another important thing that, that um, you both have mentioned, we're being guided by science. We're not trying to decide what's easiest or what's least uh, impactful to our guests. We want to provide that amazing experience we always have, but we're going to let science guide decisions like the testing and, and everything else because we know that it's too important and we really have to create that healthy return to service that I know you all are excited about and especially your clients, our guests. So we're really letting science guide our way there. Yeah, I know in every one of these webinars that we've had since pretty much April of last year is always like, when do you think it'll be back? And fortunately, there's not a crystal ball, we really wish, or knowing everything. Yes, it'll just be be ready for it as it comes. Um, and quick question to us. Uh, so Charlene asked, uh, Lori, for you, what is the name of the marketing tool that you had mentioned earlier on? I love it. Okay, it is called Branch, like a tree branch, Branch Up. And you can find it in loyal to you always and it's just all one word run together loyal to you always.com no password needed it, you just put that in and when you put that in your computer once i'm going to ask you all to bookmark it please because it's where we have everything we have all of our marketing tools in fact we do toolkits not just branch up but we have toolkits for all of our deployment opening our new ships we have microsites we just launched a brand new microsite for perfect day at coco k which will be of course the centerpiece of our return to service in north america in the caribbean our beautiful private island destination but um it's loyal to you always and you'll find you can just search for branch up and you'll see it right away but take advantage of not only that but all of the marketing tools that can be customized and turnkey for you Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. I just want to get that in because I know that we had a couple of people ask about that. Um, but now this next question, I love this question. It's going off of the question we had prior. Um, and this is from Steve. Um, so he said, for anyone on the panel, there's a clear challenge uh, that there are clients who are very anxious to book, but without any defined protocols from the cruise lines. He said, thank you, CDC, um, are reluctant to do so, which everything's gonna be changing, you know, regardless of the pent up demand. But are there any standard protocols that you think would help the industry while restarting that, you know, agents can talk about now? I, I, I'm happy to just at least start. Yeah, I think I can just remind them, it, it kind of goes back to that things are so fluid. While we have proposed a very detailed, document of 74 protocols that cover any and everything you can imagine. We, we feel like science will guide us and we'll get to that what is what makes sense and can guarantee that we approach things in a healthy way uh, for our clients and or your clients, our guests. But I think it's really just early and very fluid. And if you think back to six months ago with the virus and what we thought were concerns, uh, and, and issues really don't match what we know today. And, and there's a really a lot of simple rules to follow. Uh, we upgraded our air, air filtration because we knew no matter that would be something important to our guest. But I know it's hard and I know everybody's searching for information and clarity is what people want and need right now so badly. And at least for us, we're trying to wait until we have a solid story that we know we're moving forward with before we confuse you all because we don't want to give you a set of rules and protocols and then three weeks from now or a month from now say just kidding you know we, we, we've changed our mind and we've changed our our priorities and now it's this we, we know that you all have a really big job to take care of your clients and to tell the story and we want to make it as simple and streamlined as possible probably not I, I, help it's, it's just oh. the, it's where we are. <laughs> yeah. 
I think Lori hit the nail on the head. And, and you know, there are some safety measures, public health and safe, uh, safety measures that have been agreed upon by all of our cruise line members and river cruise operators. And if you do visit cruising.org, there is a document, a PDF document with a lot of messaging that you can use with clients in the meantime. Um, and it's part of the 2021 State of the Cruise Industry Outlook. The 2021 State of the Cruise Industry Outlook. Again, that's available at cruising.org. There's a couple of hero images that appear at the top of the website. One is that COVID-19 facts and resources page. And, but then if you click the arrow, you'll see the 2021, again, State of the Cruise Industry Outlook. And in there are, is a lot of great information, sound bites that you can use as talk tracks when talking with your clients, because they are, they're very keen to book and they can book. And actually, if, if I was still on the front line, I would say, you know what, let's just put the booking in. And because I'm so dialed in as your travel advisor, I will constantly stay Stay abreast of everything that's going on and advise you as we get closer to the sailing. So sometimes the easiest, the, sometimes the simplest way to close that booking is the most direct way and just let them know, you know what, I realize you're you're apprehensive or you're a little hesitant, but you know what, let's just pull the trigger. Let's, let's make this happen. You at home start looking forward to your wonderful cruise experience and I will be your eyes and ears in terms of all the protocols and I'll advise you as, 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 um, as needed. And that is so, so true because anticipation is so powerful to really look forward to this great experience. And all of us are so flexible now in our terms and conditions and not just us cruise lines or river cruise lines. But when I look at airlines, you know, they allow you to rebook, you know, whenever just make this decision, go for. And then if you really don't feel comfortable because certain things, you know, have happened again or so, then, you know, just move it into the future. But don't let the situation stop you doing things and living your life. We live only one life. It's too short, right? And right. nobody knows what's coming tomorrow. Not that I want to say something, but we really need to continue and, and enjoy, but always with the right precaution. And that's what we all do. Yeah, and, absolutely. And you sorry, know, something go ahead, Laura. Go ahead. You sure, Charlie? Go ahead. No? Oh, no, I just was going to say, and, and you know what, if anyone is hesitant, you know, every single travel advisor on this call should be booking group space to be hosted. You know, again, if I was on the front line still, I would be booking group space on every brand new cruise ship that, that's coming out and saying, you know what, come with me. Let me take you on this first cruise. Let's put it together. Turn those FITs that might be hesitant into groups that you host and family reunions, uh, you know. So that's all I wanted to say. Let's focus on the groups and go with them. Hold their hands for the first ones and you'll have clients for life, believe me. I love you, Charlie. I couldn't have, that wasn't what I was gonna say, but I could. I would have never <laughs> wanted to interrupt you when you tell everybody to do that because you're so right and it is so important, especially with deployment for us just now opening later into the years, 22 and 23, really perfect time to be thinking that way. So thank you for that. The other thing you actually mentioned earlier, Charlie, as well, and Christine, you mentioned too, the higher stateroom categories and the suites, they are booking first. People are, there's more money in people's bank accounts for the most part. People haven't been traveling. They have that pent up demand, but they're also booking much higher and much more luxurious accommodations than they may have afforded themselves in the past. And so the suites and the high-end categories are going first. The ships are filling from the top down and they've always done that to a degree. But I think that degree has been turned up a notch or two. Um, so not only host them, have them come with you, but make sure you get those accommodations, especially the higher end ones, booked right now because they will not be there tomorrow. Yep, absolutely. And we were just saying that earlier with the um, like Royal Caribbean already seeing a huge increase in bookings just alone in the couple, you know, 20 or 2021 came and it was like book time. So yes. So big one um so okay we're running out of time here but i do have um i have two more questions for for everybody but one this is a really good question and you can answer just as this is kind of a crystal ball question but whatever you think um but teresa asks who do you see taking the lead on the vaccination passport do you think it's the government or the travel industry i think it's going to be both 
I think it's going to be uh, governments and the travel industry working in concert with one another. And uh, um, so just to be quick with the answer, because we have another question, but I, I think it's going to be both. And I know that we're all working together. Completely agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, that's what I was like, that's that's a really good one. You know, and every again, everyone's trying to understand what's going to happen next. And we'll know once it's here. Um, but the last question that I wanted to round us out on, because um, as you're saying, you know, it's so exciting to look forward to something. So get those cruises booked. But I'm curious for each of you, when is your next uh, cruise? Do you know when that's gonna be? <laughs> Okay, so I have actually many flights booked uh, to I Europe <laughs> this year because we so hope to celebrate the questioning of our Ama Siena and Ama Lucia in July. Both brand new ships coming on board. And um, if this is not happening, then hopefully it will happen in late August. And then um, I will go to Egypt because we have our brand new Amadalia. Um, coming to cruise the Nile River uh, with the maiden voyage on September 6. So uh, all of these ships are either right on schedule or already completed. Um, really looking forward to it. And then come in for many travel advisor seminars um, that we try to host, of course, on board our ships. Uh, we work with so many different uh, travel agent groups, consortias together, and everyone wants to be back. And of course, we want to do this together. And again, when I mentioned um, that the airlines enable us to do this, to book all these flights, and if we have to move it, then we move it again. Um, that's actually a big, big relief for all of us. So, and then of course, I mentioned Yama Christina, my ship, <laughs> my namesake ship, that is now on the Rhone River. While I'm in Europe, I know I need to jump over to really at least say hello to this ship and um, maybe get a few days out of cruising on the Rhone River too. But in general, and that's what you said to both Charlie and Laurie, to the most successful travel advisors are the ones who go with their clients and lead groups. And maybe they will do the same, you know, host different groups on, on different cruise lines and stay for a long time in Europe. And that's the same with us. When I see our sales team so often, our BDM team going there, hosting travel agents, being on board with clients, listening, talking to them, being this one family, that is so, so important. And I look so much forward to really restarting there again. Yep. And, and for the sake of time, we actually, while we aren't sailing here in North America, we're working closely with the CDC and CLIA, thank you, Charlie, to make sure that we have that return to service as soon as possible. I know you all are wondering about our test cruises, and we haven't made any official announcements on those yet, but we're anxiously awaiting the green light for the test cruises. Once we do those, we know that the, the traditional cruising with our guests will start up. But we are successfully sailing, and this should be a very encouraging sign for you all. We're successfully sailing and have been out of Singapore for our Singaporeans and the Singapore market for some time now, since late last year. Very successful, no challenges, lots of practicing of all the protocols, and it's working beautifully. We start Israel with the brand new Odyssey of the Seas that we take delivery of in about two weeks. And uh, we'll start up in uh, early June out of Israel in the port of Haifa. And we're so excited about that. And that is, is ready to go. So we're preparing busily for that. And we are so excited to get ready for what we think will be the simulation or test cruises here very soon. And then, uh, it can't be soon enough as far as when we return here. I know we're all ready, and I know you all are too. And, and Stephanie, just to answer your question real quick, so I've got six cruises uh, in the shoot right now. I'm going to be on oh. Symphony of the Seas. I'm going to be on Celebrity Apex, uh, Ama Magna. I'm going to be on Queen Mary 2, Norwegian Joy, and Carnival Mardi Gras. And of course, you know, and these are all like, uh, you know, official cruises you know week-long cruises some of them are my vacations but i'm typically on a on a ship every three weeks or so uh in my role at clea so uh, i'm looking forward to uh, getting my sea legs back again 
Yes, absolutely. And that's what's so exciting is to hear when people have them booked. It's like, it's happening. It is happening. So, so exciting. And we are right on time here. So that was, that was perfect. And there were so many questions we did not get to. And I apologize, everyone. But I just want to thank you so much, Lori, Christine, and Charles for joining us here today. We could be on here all day long talking about this. So I really appreciate your time. And thank you, everyone, who joined us. And keep your eye on um, all the industry updates and hopefully we'll be cruising soon very soon so thank you so much everyone have a great rest of your day thanks again thank see ya thanks Bye, Bye. see you Bye. on board is it just us i don't know oh yeah i think <laughs> it's